Welcome back to the channel folks and we've got another 28mm painting tutorial for you here. These are Warlord Games French Line Infantry. It's a sprue of four that you received free with War Games Illustrated. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to paint up this sprue in my normal layering approach and show you how that could work to give a nice solid finish with some nice contrast some nice shading and good definition on the figure without resorting to the staples of washing and dry brushing. I began by using three different colours for undercoats. The blue and black or grey areas I've given an undercoat of black. The all other areas um, other than white I've given an undercoat of German camo black brown and in the white I've given an undercoat of deck tan. Now painting white can be quite tricky regardless of the approach that you take so I'm going to spend a bit of time showing you how I achieve a white finish with a layering approach. So I'm going to start with deck tan again. Here I'm going to be painting uh, the waistcoat and other areas other than the trousers. Now you can see when I'm applying it, I am leaving a little bit of the German camo, black brown or black, basically the dark undercoat, in the, the very deepest areas and the areas around other features. That is going to help create the depth, and the shape and the shadows that we need to make the figure stand out on the tabletop. And when I'm applying these coats guys, it's going to go on thin. You're not going to get this on in one coat. So even though this is going to be our shade colour for the white, you're going to take at least two coats to put it on. And remember to paint all the other little areas of white that is going to be on the uniform. This is not a definitive guide to the colours to paint your French infantry. I'm just using very generic colours and you want to do your own research if you have particular regiments in mind. Note in this example I used medium grey instead of deck tan, so we're getting a darker grey, dirty grey kind of finish. I'm now layering that with off-white and you can see how I'm kind of painting in lines and little blocks. Once again two coats are going to be required here so I'm not too fussed about getting it on thick and that's the same goes for if you're painting it over the deck tan too. It's going to take a couple of coats. So here you can see me using the off-white so we're not getting too bright here to start working across all the various folds, straps and other features of the figure. Once again, putting it on thin, we're going to finish it off with the next coat. So the next coat of off-white, I'm going to put it on quite wet, that might sound a bit dangerous because it could flow over all those shade areas so you have to be careful, I'm just doing it a little bit wet and what that does is help smooth out the surface so you don't get a chalky dry looking surface, you get a nice smooth surface. And then we're going in with some pure white or in this case you could just be using uh, off-white again on the, um, the medium grey colour here and this is going to be our final highlight. We're going to place our highlight as a small careful line directly above or beside the deepest area of shadow. So that helps either frame the feature such as the front of the tunic or it helps draw the greatest contrast from the shading by placing the highlight directly above or beside the shade lines. And there we are, we are finished with the white, which is the most challenging and awkward part of any Napoleonic infantryman. Mm. 
For the blue on the tunic, I've used Stormy Blue and Ultramarine Blue. I'm leaving the black undercoat as the shade colour. You could use three layers of blue, you could go lighter, um, go one layer lighter, but I want a really dark finish here. And it looks really dark on camera. And even when I put the highlight on, which is just going to be a few simple lines of the Ultramarine Blue, it's still going to have a bit of a dark finish, but that's what I'm looking for for a Napoleonic French line infantryman. And don't forget two coats, folks. Put the lines down and then join everything up together to create the basic shape where you've left your shading in place. And then we're going to use the ultramarine to place those highlights, little thin lines to help frame the shape of the tunic and also help give the greatest contrast beside the shading. Now we're making progress onto the black or metallic areas. I've given them all, remember, an undercoat of black. So I'm now going to give them a main coat of German grey. Now the black will be left as a shade colour. We don't necessarily want everything to look too black, if you understand, especially the metallic areas. So using the German grey helps keep things looking dark and black, but still allows for contrast and therefore some shape and definition to all the various areas, such as the boots, the hat, and the metallic areas of the musket. Now for some very careful highlighting with a light grey, in this case London grey, and we're just going to start hitting some edges, which will help create the shape that we want, the shape that will be visible on the tabletop. And we're going to very carefully put some very small lines onto the boots just to help give definition there as well. Now remember guys, when you paint in small lines, your brush, because there's so little paint on it, is likely to dry out. So be careful, make sure the paint is flowing nicely off the tip of the brush onto the line, the small feature that you want to paint, and you're not having to drag that paint off. But likewise, it can flow off too freely or it will start going where you don't want it to go. Now on to some red areas. I've got various areas of trim and cuff and collar here. I'm using burnt cadmium red as my shade colour. So I'm painting that over any black areas or uh, German camel black brown. That's going to become the shade colour. Still going to be framed in those darker shades but no internal shade. Then I'll be using red as the main colour and bright orange as a highlight colour. You could use a colour such as Scarlet for a highlight, but these are very, very small areas. So you need to just lift it up a degree by going into the bright orange and that really just helps make all these little details pop and catch the eye. Before I add that, bright orange highlight, I'm painting the white trim in just now and I'm just going straight in with white. No need for any other uh, layers here guys, it'll be nice and bright. And if you're painting Napoleonics folks, you better be prepared to do a hell of a lot of trim. And there's that bright orange going on. Just little dots, folks. It's, it is bright, you don't want to overdo it. Just little dots, catch some edges and corners. And then there's still more work to be doing on the, the cuffs, folks. 
I'm going to finish the cuffs with a little patch of ultramarine blue just to help them pop out from the rest of the jacket and then I'm going to be doing a few buttons giving them a dot of black and then a dot of deck tan. It's uh, not a metallic colour, you could use a metallic colour for your buttons but I prefer not to use metallic colours if at all possible. For the rucksack I'm going to be using German Camel Medium Brown over the base coat, the shade coat of German Camel Black Brown and there'll be a little highlight of old wood and I'll be building up those layers just catching each of those raised areas that you will see sculpted onto the backpack itself. The straps and trim of the rucksack could be done in white and that actually gives a nice uh, contrast and helps define the shape but in this case I've used leather brown with a highlight of orange brown on the straps. For the bedroll I'm just using some greys. I'm starting with a dark grey and this will be over a black undercoat and then I'm going to build up the layers through light rubber and then London grey once again. And then some white straps which I'm sure you'll see provides some really nice contrast there. For the musket I'm using a coat of chocolate brown over the German camel black brown which will be the shade colour and then tan, very small highlights of tan and then German camel beige World War II for the strap with a highlight of deck tan. Let's take some time to paint the skin just now. So I'm starting with a shade colour here of Saddle Brown. So I'm going to replace all of the German Camel Black Brown that would have been on the skin. This, because this is going to be our shade colour now. And before we proceed any further with the skin, I'm going to paint the eyes. Now, the technique that I employ is to come in from the side. It'll be easier on some figures than others, but coming from the side with a very small amount of off-white, ivory, that kind of colour. Not white, because that's too bright. Because at this point, we can paint a little white line and then fix it. You know, I do any corrections that are required by using our shade colour, our saddle brown. And then once you're happy with that, you take a dark colour such as German Camel Black Brown again and paint a very thin line down through the white, once again correcting any sh um, skin shade that you've gone over. The main skin colour is Sunny Skin Tone. And when I'm painting this folks, I'm kind of building up the shape of the face. And by that I mean I'm painting eyes, nose, chin, cheekbones, and then applying a highlight using just flat flesh on the tip of the nose, under the eyes, on the top lip, but not the bottom lip, on the ridge of the nose, and knuckles and such likes and that way we're going to build up the layers to create a nice clear face and hands that everybody's going to recognise. The covered shackle I've given an undercoat of old wood that's going to be our shade colour and then I'm building up the layers using World War II camel beige 
and deck tan. And we're just going to approach this in the same way as we've done elsewhere, following the sculpting of the figure and creating depth and highlight by putting our highlight colour above any shade lines and between the, the shape of the shackle and the surrounding areas. Now with this being a Napoleonic figure there's always another bit of detail waiting to be done. So I'm just working through the scabbard here folks, using whites in the way I have been using it already. Um, starting with a, a base colour here of London grey though, just to make it look a bit different from the other whites. And on the scabbard you know I'm using blacks and German greys and London grey where it doesn't have that bit of fabric wrapped around it as you can see here and the hilt of the scabbard and other sort of bronze or gold areas and building up using a sort of basic non-metallic metal approach. For this I'm using Japanese uniform, green ochre and deck tan. Those are the three layers with the deck tan being the final highlight colour and the one where you, that's where you're going to make the decision on how bright the finished look is going to be by how much deck tan you apply. You can of course just use metallic colours for these areas folks. I just like to do a non-metallic look as I find it sits better in a layering approach than metallic colours do because it's quite challenging to get the right shade tone. And now we're back to some red. We're nearly finished, but we have some pommels to paint, we have some braiding, a bit of trimming to do on the helmet. As I said, Napoleonics has always got a little bit more still to be painted, a little bit more you'll find as you go. But we're just going to paint these in the same way as I painted the other red areas. final touch for the boots is a very very thin wash of dark brown pigment powder diluted in water. That will help them look separate from the gaiters and set, set them nicely in the scene which is the base that we'll be creating. And that is us finishing up now folks. Hopefully you found that interesting. If layering is something that you do or perhaps never thought of and maybe would like to try, hopefully this video will keep you going down the, um, the right route and you can see as well folks I should point out that this whole figure was painted assembled you know there's areas behind backpacks and behind scabbards and so on but if the eye can't see it the brush can't reach it so the shade takes care of all those areas quite nicely and hopefully you found this useful for how to approach painting the white build it up in layers folks keep the brush and the paint nice and moist but not so moist that you lose control. So thanks for watching folks, subscribe for more and I will keep these coming.